Greetings radio people, welcome to Lamco Lab, deep in the bowels of LAM communications. Today I wanted to show you a few things about these new cross-country wireless software defined radios that we're stocking and give you some insight into what you can potentially do with them. This is the SDR4 and as normal I'm going to split the video into a number of parts. So in part one we'll look at the SDR itself, how you go about installing the drivers and using it with a standalone SDR application as a basic receiver. In part two I'll show you how to use this as a PAN adapter with a radio that's got an IF output. Um, I'm going to use an FTDX5000 but there are many other radios that have IF outputs on them. And then in part three I'm going to use a TS590SG which has got some features in the firmware that allow you to couple up an external receiver and we're going to use this SDR as a PAN adapter with that radio. So let's get going and see what we can do with this SDR. So this is the SDR itself. Um, as with most software defined radios, there's not a great deal to look at really. Uh, just a box of tricks. The front panel has the um, no buttons or controls or anything. Uh, just a sticker to tell you it's a cross-country wireless device uh, when it was manufactured and uh, some contact information uh, but then the back panel there's a number of connectors we've got a, a BNC connector here which is for RF input so that would be the antenna socket or when we couple it up to the IF output of a transceiver that will connect to there similarly when we do something with the uh, TS590 the drive output socket of the 590 will connect to here, but we need to be careful with the soft with the radio configuration when we do that. Uh, this LED tells you the internal software controlled attenuators in line. This socket here is actually an IQ output, now that's quite software defined radio terminology, but you'd use that to couple up to a higher bandwidth or sample rate sound card. Uh, this is an audio output which you would connect to a PC for digital mode decoding and then there are two BNC connectors this one is the actual software defined radio itself and this one is the internal sound card within this box so unusually with this you need two USB cables from this device to your PC so I'm going to connect two cables from here to my PC I'm going to connect an antenna onto here and then I'm going to do some video capture on the PC itself to show you the basic installation of this device and what it looks like with one of the free SDR applications. So the uh, SDR itself comes with a CD. On the CD is a whole pile of different stuff that you can use with your SDR4. Um, there's at least one, two, three, four different SDR applications that come with it. Uh, there's also uh, the installation itself which is in this directory here. I simply ran this as administrator and it just worked and then what else we found in here is there's a quick start guide now the quick start guide is a PDF document that takes you step by step through the installation and configuration of the radio now I don't intend to go through this on this video uh, primarily because I'm running Windows 7 and I think most people will be running Windows 10 by now but if you run the installation as administrator as I suggested here and follow the instructions it should work pretty simply as as described if you get any problems um, then do get in touch with the guys at Cross Country Wireless or the boys at LAM and we'll do our best to help you get up and running but I found it very straightforward I just followed the instructions and it just worked so I'll now show you some video capture of uh, the basic HD SDR application that this guide takes you through the installation of and show you what the SDR looks like when it's up and running. So this is what you can expect to see when you couple up your SDR uh, to an antenna. I've currently got this in uh, CW mode, it's called a narrow filter. So this is the tuning point of the radio. This is spectrum either side of the tuning point of the radio. Um, you've got a waterfall here and uh, a normal spectrum graph here. This is the audio side of the filter so it shows you how tight the filters are and again you've got a waterfall and a spectrum graph type thing here. 
Um, you can tune the radio through a whole different number of means. You can um, drag this bar across here and you'll see that the spectrum changes as I do it. You can click on signals you can see. It works like a software defined radio, but it's pretty neat and you can um, change all to all the different handbands including 6 meters and 4 meters, well the bottom end of 4 meters with this one. Um, so this is the bottom end of 20 meters at the moment and you can see there's a whole pile of CW signals around. Looks like there's a few birdies and various other bits and bobs which could be my power supply or the video capture software which is causing my CPU to go through the roof. The software itself has a very very low CPU utilization. It's my video capture that's causing me problems here today. But that gives you an idea of what you can do. So once you stop the receiver what you can then do is go in here and configure what's called cat to radio omni rig. I'm going to set up omni rig um, such that we configure my Yesu radio. So it's an FTDX 5000. It's connected to COM5. 38400 is the cat rate selected in the radio. 8 bits, 2 stop bits always for Yesu radios. And I've set the polling interval at 100 milliseconds. The other thing I'm going to do is in the options okay. section, I'm going to go cat to radio and I'm going to say sync rig 1 just like that and then I'm going to change the wiring such that the RF input on the SDR is connected to the IF output of the FTDX 5000 and then I'm going to show you what that does in the next part of the video. <music>
I've got an antenna connection as per normal going into antenna one power cables here but this is the important thing this is a BNC cable but it's actually got a BNC to I think they call it an RCA or old-fashioned people call it a photo connector that connects into this drive socket here and then I'll just flip the radio around and show you the menu settings to configure this as an RF output that we can use with the SDR. It's very important that we configure the radio correctly so that we don't send RF down this cable to our SDR because I don't think it would appreciate that very much. So I'll show you that in a minute and then we'll show you what the SDR looks like once it's coupled up to this socket. So here's the front of the TS590 SG and it's a menu item 85 that we're interested in. Uh, the main label of that is ANT, sorry that's what's selected. The, the label is DRVCON, so Drive Connector, and the options are Antenna or DRO, and I think DRO stands for Drive Output, but we want this on ANT, Antenna, so that we're clear that we're using this as an extra antenna feed to a separate receiver. And the only other thing then to note is when to switch it on, we press and hold the meter button which is also labelled DRV press and hold that and you'll note there's a little star has appeared above VFO frequency the VFOB frequency and that star tells you that the second antenna output through the drive socket is active it's very important to get the radio configuration correct if you find you haven't got that star double check it because we don't want to be using we don't want to be sending RF down the line to the SDR when we put the radio into transmit so you need to make sure that you've got that star there so now I'll go on and show you what the SDR looks like connected up to this. Now you configure it to use it with this 590. So, just to recap, what we've got now then, we've got menu 85 of the TS590 set to ANT. That configures the drive connector on the rear panel to be an antenna output. We've pressed and held the meter button, which is also labelled DRV, to enable the drive socket as an RX antenna output and there's a star appeared on the screen above VFOB to tell us that that uh, antenna output socket is active. The Omni rig setup here is similar to last time so here I've set up Omni rig and rig 2 is configured as my TS590. My COM port happens to be 14. Board rate is 57.6 that's configured in the radio itself. Data bits 8, stop bits 1 in this case and I've altered the polling interval to be 200 milliseconds. Now, very similarly before, we've got the radio uh, in the options setting here for the RF front end and calibration. Instead of having the IF output configured, we've just got it configured as if it's connected to an antenna, but we've still got this sync mode selected, and we've still got in here, in the options here, over the cat to radio, I've got sync rig 2 uh, highlighted. So once you start the radio you can see the tune point here and the frequency that's being read as the tune point is actually being read from the TS590 SG and the only difference now is that instead of the radio, the SDR being permanently tuned to the 9 MHz IF, the tuning of the SDR is now identical to the tuning of the radio. So as I tune my radio so the tuning on my SDR will change and similarly as we had before if I were to click on a, a signal here it would in turn tune the radio into that signal automatically and similarly as we had before as well you've got the tune point of the radio here and what you've also got is the spectrum that's visible above and below the tune point so we have a pan adapter working on the TS590 the only thing some people get concerned about is that when you enable the RX output there's a small attenuation gets put in your antenna but it really is a very small attenuation that I don't think you'd notice uh, under normal operating at all um, absolutely nothing to worry about and this then gives you a full pan adapter functionality on the TS590 SG which as I described for the uh, the Yesu radio this is really really very nifty um, and the options are almost endless really some of the applications you can get that don't cost anything there's no licensing costs allow you to do an awful lot of, of control between the radio and the SDR and the SDR to the radio so really really useful very handy and pretty damn nifty